This is such a, a, a moving, powerful, full drama. And then when you go to see it at, at screenings, be it at festivals, whatever, all you can hear is people sniffling at the end, you know, just everyone just crying the whole way through. And but, very silent as well. <laughs> and very yeah. silent, exactly. Yeah. But when you two um, watch it, are you able to get emotionally caught up in it? Are you able to be moved by the story? Or is that quite difficult when you're in the film? I think it's mixed with other feelings for us. Hmm. It's not. You never really see a film, I would say. I mean, I saw it only three times. Yeah, me too. First time before Cannes, then in Cannes, and then in Toronto, I think. Uh, something that I liked about watching it again is that it changes all the time. Of course, that because you play in the film, it's always a weird thing to do. But I, I was very moved, not by our scenes or by my scenes, but by some moments of the other characters, yeah. And was it quite hard to shake off at the end of a day shoot? It, some of the scenes you guys have to, to perform were so sort of powerful and so um, uh, moving that when, when at the end, when Robin would say cut at the end of the day, would, was it easy to go back to, to reality or did, would the characters really stay with you throughout the, the entirety of the shoot? No, it's... Um, I wouldn't say it's the character that stays. It's the energy. Well, I mean, the, of course, the energy the of the shooting. Uh, and when you do, like, when you play in, like, this kind of intense films, it's like your mind is always very, you know, into the film. So yeah. even like during the weekends, you're resting, but you're thinking about the scenes that you have next week. So it's more about, yeah, about an energy <laughs> rather than a character and uh, like. And you can tell on the set that everyone was like um, uh, moving in the same direction. So technicians, actors. So it's difficult at the end just to say, OK, um, mm. um, it's a new energy and yeah. let's have fun. We could have. We would, yeah. we would stay actually yeah. after yeah. the shooting we, day, we'll have we, a beer or something. And for me, um, at the end of the week, like on Friday night, my only concern was to be on Monday morning and uh, mm. meet my uh, buddies mm. again yeah. and shoot and be in that energy. Yeah. But it was very necessary uh, to just like, after the end of the shooting day, just like <sighs> decompress. Yeah. It was very demanding. Yeah. I would say every day I, I have a, a, like a memories of like very intense, yeah. long, Emergency. very long, urgent, yeah, 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 that kind of feeling. And yet, yet, in spite of that, I mean, the characters, particularly Sean, has a real, quite very positive outlook on life. And I was just wondering, as actors, do you often take uh, the traits of the characters you embody ever rub off on you in person? Do you ever find that when you played four or five roles, for example, that sometimes you take certain aspects of the characters that you played that, that have them infiltrate your own real life so, personality? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The sides that we like or mm -hmm. we can connect it with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It changes you in, in a way, not in a very material perspective, maybe, but something. Yeah. I mean, when you, it's like doing sports or like doing something that's, that you're not really used to doing. When you do it during a certain amount of time, many things get into your body or into your, yeah. I take it as a very physical thing. Uh, yeah, repetition makes you become something. Yeah. And in this case, we're talking about acting. And yeah, of course, you can get like certain behaviors or certain yeah, yeah. words or certain ways of looking or whatever. This is true. And the, talking of the, the physical side, of course, you had to lose lots of weight for the role. Um, what was it like putting it back on and off? Because I remember Tom Hanks always said when he lost lots of weight for Philadelphia, he was really worried about the long-term effects it could have. I mean, did, did you find the whole process to be quite easy in the end? Or what was it quite well, a challenge? Well, in our case, we didn't, have, we didn't have a lot of time to prepare for that. So I was losing weight while shooting the film. So it's not that I had like six months, yeah. you know, just to read books and lose weight. So it was very extreme and it was very short. It was like 15, 20 days. Uh, so I didn't even have the time to think about it. But I can tell you that after the shooting, I was sort of left alone just trying to, you know, reincorporate like food that I <coughs> stopped eating before. And it was quite tough the first days. Actually, it's really hard to get back to your normal diet. Um, it's as hard as... Uh, stop eating things it's very strange because always thought everybody I just, gets like unaccustomed because yeah. i was going to say i'd love someone to say to me <coughs> now you have to put weight on my blood like, oh. oh no oh. that's even no for me that's even worse <laughs> even worse i can't yeah. oh, i think you know, i i just burn everything <laughs> I, I wish i could but well that's what i try to do before the shooting actually yeah. i but it was just like one kilogram yeah like two pounds yeah. that's all i could i could gain you told and me that yeah i was just like eating like <laughs> i eat stuff. i eat um, nothing nothing happens yeah. 
Yeah, I haven't yeah. got that problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking to uh, to because I'm I'm I wasn't uh, old enough to, to have lived through the t- the t- period of time the film set. I was speaking to my parents, and they were they were saying that this this at the time there was people were sort of just living in in fear. There were, it, there was people that would. I'm just wondering about you guys. I guess trying to get into the headspace of characters who were living in this kind of community in in, in a world where there was this kind of lingering sense of of fear, kind of very present mm. all the time. I suppose mm. in these characters' lives. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I didn't have that feeling because I'm younger. Yeah. So yeah, we were born right after that or during that, but or like sec- my sexuality was never in danger mm. uh, because we had the means to protect ourselves and stuff. Uh, so I don't know how it, how it was. I would say that it was like a very general feeling that we created. Death, yeah. Like death around, like, I mean, I don't know if it's death or I, I would say that it's urgency. That's the urgency, word yeah. that we just yeah. like always say because it was like being in that urgent state. I have no idea how it is to bury it. Well, yeah, I do. You could feel in the scripts yeah. or in the scenes that there is like um, a certain sense of emergency and there are like, doing things very yeah. rapidly, um, quickly. Um. Because actually, if you think about the film, because you're talking about fear, but if, but if you look in the film, there's very little fear. It's just the second part of the film yeah. when like, okay, life is gonna the disease end, is the disease taking is taking over. Yeah. And, and actually my character, actually he says, I'm afraid. But it's, it's just like once mm. in the film. Because what moves all those people is might be fear, but it's transformed yeah. into action. Action. Yeah. So what yeah. we see in the film is a very vital. Yeah. To do one. something. Yeah. I mean, as you said, I mean, obviously, act- activism is such a huge part of this. I mean, how has that changed now? Because I was thinking about these days when, when, when it comes to kind of the modern form of acti- activism. I mean, we're, we're kind of signing petitions online, or we're retweeting something on Twitter, yeah. Yeah. and almost feeling like, well, that's. That's yeah, our bit done. Yeah. But is it? Is do you think that even though, in, thanks to the internet and social media, maybe we're learning more about things happening around the world, we're actually in some ways doing less about them. I think we're, that we're training the muscle. It's very strange because we, you can be aware of everything, and at the same time, you're training your indifference muscle. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're more and more conscious if you're interested in looking, you know, into issues. Mm. But at the same time. That's what I feel. You're like, okay, I just don't do anything, or I just sign a petition, and that's all I can do. I live that with a with a with a lot of contradiction, and yeah, it's a big issue. I think that we can't just like summarize that into a one minute yeah. answer, right? Yeah. But just very very funny. Just I'll ask you, I mean, because obviously you sort of left acting. Yeah. I was wondering about just quickly about um, how you came back into it, and was it was it. Did you decide, right, I want to get back into it and then sort out a project and this came about? Or did this come to you and that made you decide you wanted to Yeah, get the second option, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I received a call from a casting director I used to work with 10 years ago and said, do you want to do um, a try for me? I um, said, no. Um, and she explained me the movie and the subject, the political aspect. And I said, okay, for something like this, why not trying? And it was the beginning of the casting process. Yeah, because you were a masseuse in between. Yeah, that right? masseuse and sophrologist. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, it's yeah. So a bit different. <laughs> yeah, a bit different. Yeah, a bit, really a bit. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Much thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.